It's fascinating. You know, we're at this unusual period of history, and, and it's happening so fast, I think it's difficult for a lot of people to grasp. So here's an interesting statistic. If somebody is 22 years old today, they've been alive when half of all the oil ever burned throughout history has been burned. You know, we've been using it for, you know, since 1859, but really it's when you're compounding your use of something at 1%, 2 3% a year, really, you know, it's the last few decades that really count in that story. And so here we are at a very interesting sweep of history where, you know, either we're at peak oil right now or in 10 years. Doesn't I'm actually a little, in some case respects, I don't care if it's now or in 10 years because that's a blink of a historical eye. It's happening now by all intents and purposes. And so when I was talking with Jim Puplav on an interview recently, he, he had a very good point. I love this phrase. He said, oil is the new Fed funds rate, meaning that in the past, when you had ample resources and, and everything was a, was a function of money, we just put more money into the economy, it comes back to life and people go out and get more oil or other resources. Uh, it was your Fed's fund rate that sort of dictated your total level of economic activity, but if energy is your master resource, and now the price of oil is somewhat immune to whatever you're doing over there on the monetary side, except it tends to respond when you print too much of it. The oil at $100 a barrel is not really consistent with any economic recovery that I can find in the historical series. That's part one. Part two, we see that our total debt loads are going to require extraordinary economic growth if we have any hope. And I'm going to use the word hope very carefully here. If we're going to have any hope of having those debt piles resolve themselves through the normal mechanisms of a resumption of economic growth and a tame level of inflation, and we sort of continue to build them even as we're digging out from under them. I'm looking at energy now as as something that I don't believe anybody in the halls of power. I don't think there's anybody on the Federal Reserve Board that understands the energy story in the way they need to in order to begin to combine what's happening in energy from a structural geological standpoint with how we operate our monetary system and the policies we implement and the decisions we make. I think there's still a huge gap there. Uh, Fortunately, that means there's a huge gap there that people who are clever and can see this coming can exploit that gap um, and and do reasonably well. But on balance, I think this story ends relatively poorly, and it ends poorly for the money system. Energy is a function of reality. It's physics. It's... uh, it's nature. It's reality. I think it's the money system that that falls apart in this story, um, and that's sort of the angle I've been going towards. Looking at peak oil not as a as a matter of theory, not as a religion I adhere to, not as anything I particularly believe in, but a set of facts and observations that lead me to conclude there's a, a, a higher possibility and probability of seeing a crack up in our money system, and this time it's global. Um, a higher possibility of a crack up in the global money system, by which I mean the fiat money system born in 1971, than than at any other period of history I can really look at. Um, This feels unique to me in that way. Do you have any resonance with that sort of set of confluence of ideas, or does that make sense to you? I know you've, you've been at this a lot longer than I have, and and uh, one thing I worry about is that I'm I'm just a new guy looking at new information and thinking it's all new when in fact it's just an old story and it'll repeat again and again. Uh, you're on the right road in that the price of oil is comparable with the price of gold. It's uh, it's a one-time asset that uh, the Saudis are wisely taking the money they sell it uh, for which they sell it and buying hard assets. Uh, including gold, and uh, but also land and real estate. And again, this is economic imperialism. Uh, oil is uh, is a is reality, and you can print all you want, but the amount of oil uh, remains the same. I think energy is very important, uh, and the question is how you play it. Now, if if you are if you are an owner of an oil of oil, uh, whether it's in uh, the fracking oil here in America or or elsewhere. Uh, that you're just selling a capital asset. You're selling an inheritance, and that's one thing. But the question is how most of us who do not own uh, oil fields, how do we play that? And uh, that's, that goes one step uh, further than, than your perception and uh, than, than your sound perception, and the question is how do you play that? Well, you can either buy oil, uh, oil stocks, um, and and uh, and and that's a good idea, I think, as in the in the vagaries of uh, those that have crude reserves. Uh, that's why I think Exxon has been uh, so strong, uh, although they themselves are now moving into natural gas in a big way. They themselves realize that the large fields 
are either um, been discovered already or that the political situation in them uh, with sticky fingered politicians make them makes that untenable. I'm playing it in a different way. I'm uh, I was the original uranium bug when the uranium was eight dollars a pound, and it went up uh, to one hundred and thirty eight dollars a pound, and and um, I, I, perhaps I should have sold it there, but I was taking a long review and. It's come back now about halfway. It's about sixty dollars a pound now, and I think it's also going to go much higher because beyond oil, you have uranium, and for money that you want to put away for the long term, I think that's one of the areas. And um, the uh, 08 uh, crash, and again the uh, crash last year. And by the way, we did have a crash last year in in 2011. It was uh, concealed by the Dow Jones Industrial Average up, but just about every other average in the world was down, and some by 20% or more, and the low price stocks had huge drops, all of them. I mean, nothing nothing survived, and uh, but that makes them even more underpriced, and we're getting, just in the last few weeks here, uh, just in January alone, uh, some of the uranium stocks uh, that we that we like are like fission energy is up 27 percent just this month. Uranium energy is up 37 percent. Paladin up 40 percent. Uraners up 43 percent, and Laramide is up 56 percent. So you're getting a tremendous rally. This is how you make serious money. I mean, if you can make 56 percent in one month, uh, you can outrun uh, inflation, and even in a deflation, who cares? That's even better. So it's a question of how you pl- uh, play. Yeah, your perception is of peak oil is correct, uh, but there's also the uh, factor of natural gas fracking, and also uh, how you play it. And I'm I'm playing the oil boom uh, by investing in the uh, fracking area, and also uh, in the uh, uranium uh, mining area, uranium uh, uh, stock mining area. And they're selling for still selling for pennies here. I think there's way more higher prices ahead. Uh, Interesting.